You're Near the Wild with Matt Becker and John Norris, recorded in Anchorage, Alaska. Hello? There's Matt Becker. Yeah, it is correct. Hey, sounds good, too. I'm bus- Does it? Yeah. I'm actually, I'm just on the iPad. Oh, wow. Oh, my God, is that John Norris walking through the front door? <laughs> Look at that timing. Yeah, I'm trying to get the the uh, the, the 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 MacBook. Wouldn't uh, it says Skype is being interrupted? It won't load, so it's weird. So then, what did I? How did I just? I oh, I got you through the the iPad. Yeah, through the iPad. Yeah, right. I just so we'll just do that then. Hello. Hey, John Norris. Hey, Greg Shaley. Can you guys hear okay? Uh, yeah, I can hear you. All right. I mean, I, you're you're answering in, in a timely manner. It's just, just uh, just wondered if you guys could hear. Uh, it's it's you know I'm hearing I'm hearing you. All right, good. Everyone's ears are working. Mine are at least. Yeah. Do you guys need to settle in? Is there something? Yeah, we're good. Oh, we're hold on, hold on, hold on. You guys go get your drinks. I just got a. We got the drink. We just got drinks. Okay, uh, got have stickers. a have a cocktail. I'm I'm gonna leave things running, but uh, I just got word that uh, my massage may have been canceled. And if that's the case, oh, no. then, then we don't have to rush. So just I'll be right back, okay? Okay. <laughs> Do you guys think gonna blow us off for a massage? For a massage? <laughs> like, really? You got a girlfriend in Bisbee? One of the few people with a girlfriend in Bisbee? <laughs> <laughs> and you gotta pay for well, it? <laughs> a lot of a lot of a lot of people have a girlfriend in Bisbee. It's just the same girl. Yeah. <laughs> Hmm. So I got burgers already done for us. Oh, sweet. And I got lettuce and I got a uh, uh, thing chopped up. It was good. I was just like waiting. Going, oh, I had it set up outside and then the clouds just got darker and darker rolling. And I went, yeah. we're going to get rained on. We just got done with a shoot at the zoo. Hmm. And we were like, I was like, it's taking way too long. But yeah. the uh, I got some great, check out this porcupine. <laughs> It's like my favorite. It's like my favorite. Yeah, about a dollar every time somebody told me that. <laughs> You're gonna show me a dick pic, aren't you? <laughs> Look at this uh, guy. <laughs> Look at this guy. He's just trying to escape. Oh my god, that's great. He really is trying to escape. Mr. Pickle's trying to just get out of there. He does not consider this a breach. Oh. Hey. Hello, Cricket. What makes you think you're so important? You can smell the burgers. All right, I'm here. All right. Great. Can you hear us all right? <laughs> How was your massage? Everything's fine. That was the shortest and the uh, cheapest massage I've ever had. Get right to the happy ending. We were like, you're the only guy in Bisbee with like a full-time girlfriend. Uh, you can't – you got to pay for it. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, – well, I don't know what happened, but it's it's scheduled for tomorrow now, and I, I don't want one tomorrow. I wanted one today. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> You're not eye maintenance wow. at all. I see why the girl won't do it. Well, it, it, she used to come over here to the house during football and and then just set up the table down in uh, in our house. And then people would come down during football and get a massage and go up and have some chicken wings and drink some beers and do everything that's counterproductive to getting a massage. But it's like a real, and, real the, Roman orgy situation well, you guys have over there. Yeah. And, and now I have to go to where she's at. And then now it's not even when I want it; it's when she's available. It's, it, she doesn't seem like she's much of a. You mean like a like a professional massage therapist? No, yeah. Greg, you're in, you're in a relationship. <laughs> yeah, I don't know right. if you know this, but <laughs> she takes you for granted now. It's yeah. all it's great at the beginning, but then it's just more and more work to get it. Things. She's a rub doctor. D- d- guys, things have changed. I just don't think <laughs> she gets me. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I just, I think, I think now she just takes it for granted. It's like, yeah, hey, really? Yeah. The, do you have a punch card or anything that you, if I come here a lot? I'm getting the those, feeling you're those, seeing those someone knots, else. Those knots in your back, they used to just work themselves out real quick. But now, <laughs> the longer you've been going to her, now, like, you're lucky if she, she gets one of them. Well, you know what, guys? I, I really appreciate this talk. I'm going to say something to her. <laughs> no, I think now's the time. Actually, write her a letter and, and leave it on her door and run. <laughs> Just knock and run. <laughs> and if that doesn't work, a flaming bag of dog shit. That always works. <laughs> I, I forgot about that. Gets the message across. Mm-hmm. Well, what it is, is the flaming bag of dog shit kind of died out when they started using plastic bags. 
<laughs> it's not funny anymore. Now you can actually cause a fire. Yeah, 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 yeah. The paper really kind of just uh, it's just enough to get the point across. Hear the bitchy lady on the corner, her house burned down? Oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> And she had security cameras, so I guess they're okay. Well, Becker, I see that there has been a uh, more uh, volcanic activity down in uh, Costa Rica. Ah, yeah, a twofer. A twofer. I couldn't find the second one, but I because I saw you uh, you tweeted something, and then I went looking for it, and I know I found the one, but that's kind of ongoing. So is. Uh, I mean, how far yeah, does this they, prediction go? I mean, <laughs> no, I'm telling you what. The, here's the thing: whether man kills a large population or a natural disaster does, that's the bet. Okay. Right now, the uh, natural right. disasters are in the lead, but China's right there. Right? <laughs> but your your predictions can be kind of vague. Like I predict wind. No, no, not at I predicted the largest earthquake between the last week and the first week of February. The second largest in North America. Because you weren't born in 64, John, you wouldn't know about the first one because you don't read. <laughs> but, yeah, so I predicted that. So I think that's pretty good, right? All right. All right. It hasn't happened. I predicted Brexit. I predicted there. Prince dying. That is true. <laughs> Roundabout. You said you predicted elevators. <laughs> no, I, I, I knew there would be a need. But you called them up machines. You didn't even have the right name. Yeah, well, I mean, I didn't think it would want to go down again. Once you got that kind of view, who would leave? Who'd leave? I thought the drones would be delivering sandwiches. <laughs> I'm amazed. The volcanoes in Costa Rica, I have no sense of how big Costa Rica is. Is it? It's the size of New Jersey. Does So does this affect your, your land holdings in Costa Rica? Well, I mean, it affects everyone with air, John. But uh, the thing is, is it, it's, it's one of those... Uh, where you got to look at the Philippines now have one going off, and they're part of the uh, Ring of Fire, mm-hmm. which you think is a Johnny Cash song. It is. Well, it was. <laughs> <laughs> and so, yeah, that's where we're headed. We're headed into natural disaster versus man-made disaster. Once water becomes a shortage, uh, you're going to have fights over water like you did with oil or uh, diamonds. <laughs> no, well, <laughs> we figured out the oil thing. We're just fracking it all now. No, do you see that, they discovered the largest uh, in Tanzania while they were busy trying to frack natural gas because Tanzania has to ruin their water supply too. There's no reason we would be fracking in Tanzania where they don't have shoes. But they found the largest stockpile now of helium. Do you know helium? Once it's gone, it's gone. Wait, hold on a second. I, what, helium? Like the stuff to put in balloons to make them float? Yeah, the fact that I can still buy it at fucking goddamn Walmart amazes me. So what? Well, hold on. What do you what mean? Once it's gone, helium? it's gone. What? What do you mean? Once it's gone, it's gone. They, we don't know how to make helium. Once we run out, they think they've tapped into almost everything. That's why Tanzania is such a big uh, find. They found a huge uh, underground pocket of helium. So make those funny voices while you can. Greg. No helium. No, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what else helium is used for. I'm sparing I know, that's the I'm... beauty of your generation. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is great. You don't even know how to make those little things. Remember, Greg, those paper things where you go one, two, three, four with the little cones. Yeah, and you could just. I don't. Well, yeah, I guess. that's called mash. I know that. Yeah. Yeah. Can you make one right now? Yeah. You can't. Sure. No. No, you can't. <laughs> You've seen it, but you don't know how to do it. You've seen helium, but you don't know how to make it. I could try. Yeah, you're going to die. <laughs> you're going to die. You're not being on that last space station out of here. The, the world's going to be burning around me, and I'm just going to be doing origami. Uh, trying to what it. happened with Sanders? Oh, he died too. Well, so so helium, helium? Where, how, does, how do we lose helium? How do, I mean, what happens? Isn't it always just around? We like, use it. Well, you, we, we use it. we talk about what we use? Before we delve into why it's leaving us, normally I look it up on my iPad and tell you, but there's. <laughs> <laughs> but no, look it up because gonna, no, there, it there's up. there's like nine things that you have to have it for. Same with uh, oil. Oil is one that using oil in cars is the any scientist will tell you it's the craziest thing you've ever done because once it's gone, you can't make plastic with anything else, and with all the poly fibers, flexible screens, all this stuff. Once it's gone, it's gone, and you can't really repurpose it as much as you think. In other words, recycling is cute. It keeps Boy Scouts busy. <laughs> but I need to drive to the end of my block to check my mail. I gotta. I have to do it. I can't walk. Yeah, you still get mail? 
I do get a little bit of mail mm-hmm. sometimes, mostly from Captain. So what you're saying is is that that uh, scientists agree, although not it's usually not a hundred percent, but no, 100%. Sci- scientists agree that the worst thing we should be doing, the worst thing we could be doing with our supplies of petroleum is or light sweet crude is powering cars and powering cars. Yep. Hmm. Interesting. I mean, they said it'd be, it'd be smarter to make Jello with it. It, it. it doesn't seem like they've they really used it for anything until they found out they could use it to power cars. No, they didn't know what to do with it. I mean, yeah. if you watch how that that I mean, it killed the hooligan market. <laughs> Did you know that the Wait. hooligan market was a million dollar a year business up here? Oh, oh, I thought you were, I thought you were talking to soccer fans. No, not oh. hooligans. Hooligan. <laughs> okay. Big difference. The little fish. fish. Yeah. Learn to pronunciate. Yeah. No. <laughs> no, but the little oily fish, they had a million dollar market and it lasted until all of a sudden, and this is a typical Alaska. They were behind the times because of communication problems. Uh, they didn't notice that the market dropped because all of a sudden people started using kerosene and other oil byproducts for lan- lanterns. Before that, you use hooligan oil. And they had the complete market. Yeah. Because you burned it. That's the only way you had light. What do you think of that, Greg? I yeah. think that's uh Yeah, that's uh I don't know how that has to do with helium. Okay, so here Because is... once you once you ruin a market, you're done. Here's a quote from uh Sad Clown Science Journal about <laughs> helium. <laughs> this this uh, sounds this sounds official. Hold on now. Okay. Uh, helium gas is used to inflate blimps, scientific balloons, and party balloons. It's also used as an inert shield for arc welding to pressurize the fuel tanks of liquid fueled rockets in its rockets. supersonic wind tunnels. So it has, we use it for party balloons, but then it has these other like very It's the rockets. Specialized uses. That's the reason the scientists are concerned. You how can't we, shoot a rocket without it. How are we going to get off this fucking hellhole planet if we don't have helium? Says the clown contingency, the lobbyists yeah. hey, from Ringling clown, Brothers. That clown is worried. <laughs> no helium. He's out of a job. Hey, sad clown. <laughs> How's your poodle now? Uh, <laughs> I do have an update from uh, last last week's podcast. Uh, update time. The update time. The uh, the shrimp that was being injected. Yes. To, to make them look more plump. I, the ones you ate. Yeah. Well, we, I, we don't know that yet, but the more I'm reading is the, is is chances are one of the three of us has eaten <laughs> this this shrimp. Uh, oh, sure. it, it, they can't tell what the material is, and you can tell it with the naked eye. It's not like the, it's microscopic. It's like it's like a chunk of this junk that comes out, and they can't they can't say it's silicone. I don't know if I said that or if uh, if they surmised it might be that. Maybe but, your massage therapist said you feel like you got a lot of silicone in you. <laughs> I can, I, all I know is on this podcast, you definitely said it was silicone. Oh, I, yeah. I say, I, I'm saying that. That's why I'm, I'm taking the time to make a bit of a retraction here. Uh, it was a, a gel material and not silicone. But I did say at the end of the podcast, it's, it, it's o- if it's not silicone, it's only not silicone because silicone is more expensive than something else they oh, found. Sure. They don't fucking care. <laughs> they found something cheaper. It. Yeah. It's- Probably like it's probably just like clear jello. It's just gelatin that they inject, it, in and, or it could be the methacellulose that I that I referred to that we use uh, sure. in the haunt industry and and is used in in is used in uh, food production. But once again, it's going to be the price. If they could get liquid glass for a little bit cheaper, they would probably inject it with liquid gl- ga- glass if there's such a thing. And really, like you know, you throw it in a stir fry. What are you gonna? Are you gonna not eat it? Yeah, you're putting in uh, you're putting in uh, cornstarch to thicken it up anyway. Now you you might sure. you might be saving a step. Yeah, yeah. I don't. Uh, I think it's like when Becky was smoking clove cigarettes when I first met her. She smoked cloves, and I said, you know, that comes from India. If there's anything in it, they could eat. They'd eat it. <laughs> so I go, you're smoking literally shit chips. <laughs> Well, you know, I went kind of down a little rabbit hole when I when I was looking more into the uh, the gel injection uh, videos and the articles about the the, uh, the 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 slave trade connected to the fishing, especially shrimp, crustaceans or not crustaceans, um, uh, tiger prawns, the big ones. Yeah, I mean, yeah. just there's so much money, and these guys, like, like you said, John, they're they're 18 months at sea without seeing land, and they're slaves. They're, I mean, nice job, little man. Yeah. But then, I, then I got into a little, uh, you know, you get in these little rabbit holes. You go down and you, you start uh, reading more and more and getting scared, <laughs> and like, oh my god, we need helium. But I, I read about the uh, then, serimi, 
The Japanese. If you're like me, you read all these horrible things about the food industry, and you're like, "I'm not eating shrimp ever again." And then, like, you're strong for like two days, and you're like, "Oh shit, Sizzler." Hey, that's all you can eat. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. I don't know how they do it, but I'm doing it. How do all the silicone you can eat? Such. How do they have such cheap shrimp here? It's incredible. <laughs> mm-hmm. Hey, we got a bunch of these breast implants from the '70s back. What do you want to do with them? <laughs> Put it in that guy's food. <laughs> Well, as I kept looking, I, I swore off shrimp. You got it, John. I, I swore off shrimp because of these, these poor guys that are, uh, you know, enslaved. It's total human trafficking over shrimp. And then, yeah. and then I got into the, the fake. Terrible for your cholesterol, by the way. The fake crab, K-Rab, the surimi. Yeah. I Don't started, tell me anything bad about K-Rab. Oh, my God. Do I, hang up the phone now, then. It, there's, no. there's nothing good about it. And I thought no. the whole time I'm eating it thinking, hey, I'm getting a little protein. I'm doing it. No, you're better off eating cottage cheese or something. I it's thought a, it was Pollock. It's, it's Pollock, but Pollock. it's not. <laughs> Pollock's a derogative term. That's, that's a whole. De- that's, that was Whoa. generations Move ago. <laughs> Moved to formerly UK Britain. I thought it was Piece chopped up Polish people. That's what I thought it was. <laughs> that, that was when it was okay? <laughs> yeah, it was fine. Well, yeah, it it would probably be better for you if there were a Polish people in it. It's uh, yeah, oh, Surimi is basically Japanese for ground meat. So they say there's Pollock in it, but they you don't really. There's a lot of stuff in there. There's actually there's actually pieces of crab in it. So it's not even a good alternative to eating actual crab if you have an if, if there's some kind of an allergy. Situation. No, that's why Becky have... Becky laughed because we got artificial crab one time and she read it. She goes, "You know, there's oh, ground yeah. up crab in this." I go, wow, I can't believe it tastes like crab. Yeah, it's like, hey, what's that bonus. secret ingredient that makes this fake crab taste like crab? Well, we yeah, crush. It's, it's the Taco Bell meat sauce. We crush crab and put it in there. <laughs> it's like, wow, and it tastes just like the crab you, you sprinkled in. Yeah, my so. Family, my family loves fake crab. We have a family recipe called crab spaghetti, which is basically just like pasta and fake crab and then some like tomatoes and stuff to make it look nice. Uh, and that is really disheartening because, you know, I come from a poor family. We can't afford actual crab. So <laughs> we, should call, we should definitely call it k rap spaghetti. Yeah. Oh, my God. That's so you've been eating this how long? Oh, for my entire life. You're doing my entire life. I've been accidentally eating real crab. So you, Get out of here. I don't understand. Congratulations. We need to the health care system and drop people who don't know about this. <laughs> So what, what do you, what's your family favorites? Okay, you're done on our insurance. <laughs> John, I think you should definitely inform people when they come over now of a uh, of an allergen uh, possible issue with allergies. Uh, if they're oh, that's eating, how I weed if, out my weak friends. I give them <laughs> peanuts and crab. <laughs> no, there's not. That's fake crab, and those are uh, those are soy nuts. You're not eating peanuts. <laughs> have some soy. Have a big thing of soy nuts. Well, you know, I was gonna do that with the the powdered uh, peanut butter because yeah. I was coming up with clever things to do in the bar. And then Becky goes, "Well, aren't you worried about somebody with peanut allergies?" And I go, "Fuck! I'd have to put big disclaimers like we're filming a <laughs> porn video up on the walls." And Jimmy go, "I didn't know. Did it have contact?" And then some guy makes out with a chick. She dies. I'm just like the peanut thing is killing me. I go, you know what? Let's just you no holes barred. Strobe lights and peanuts everywhere. Let's weed out the weak. Then you see, then hey, skanky bleeder, you're di- <laughs> you're hypoglycemic. That's when you get like the next night on the news. You have some crying mom talking about how her son was allergic to peanuts, and if he would have known that that was a line of powdered peanut butter and not cocaine on the bar, he never. Would. Oh, could you imagine putting peanuts in cocaine? <laughs> <laughs> That's how oh you get my- some protein and some energy. Yeah, I know. That's what I'm thinking. You get that extra rush and then, oh, <laughs> And you're not salty. hungry. <laughs> no. I can't I can't stop eating peanut butter, so that sounds like a recipe for disaster. That would ruin my life. Yeah, cocaine, would be good? Like peanut butter cocaine? You could just, yeah, I'm going to do it. I'm going to make it and sell it. Those It'll like- be mixed in. Cocaine with that powdered peanut butter. You just mix water with it, eat it. Next to you, you're running fucking blocks. <laughs> it's gonna be like, and, and I'll use Lionel Richie's song, Stuck on You. It's fucking brilliant. How can we mix the two most addictive substances known to man, <laughs> cocaine and peanut butter? <laughs> what what would you call it? Uh, think of somebody. Think of a good name quick. Pinola. Pinola. P- Pinola. That sounds like a, that sounds like it's already something. Yeah. Pinola. Pinola. Uh. <laughs> speed. I like speed peanuts. <laughs> Colombian nut wipe. Speed nuts. <laughs> Colombian nut wipe. <laughs> 
Well, while you're while you're thinking of a of a name uh, for your peanut butter cocaine contraption, uh, John, you you are uh, literally days away from uh, departing on your trip to uh, Europe. leaving America True. forever True. on the fourth of July. Now, and now I finally realize why all my fucking shitbag friends keep doing like GoFundMe campaigns for their vacations. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm like, that's not a bad idea. <laughs> uh, I'm very excited to leave. I am at that point where like vacation has basically already started in my mind and like everything is just like, fuck it. Take care of it when I get back. I have like, I, my brakes are screeching on my car. I'm like, nah, fuck it. We'll be all right. No, because you know you're not coming back. Yeah, I might not come back. John's going to end up in Germany. And he's going to do fine. I, I'm, I do have I'm, some money-saving tips for you. 24% fluent. Money-saving tips? Oh, yeah. Go for it. All right. Uh, uh, first of all, there is, there, you're, you'll be in Berlin, West Berlin, for a while. And you said you, you're probably going over to East Berlin. That's great. It'd, it'd be mm-hmm. nice to get an update on what it's like over there. Uh, right. To uh, You uh, asked about Uber. There is Uber in, uh, in Berlin. <laughs> what do they call it? <laughs> <laughs> they call it Super. I don't know. Super, super, uh, yeah. No, they call it Uber, but they also have a thing called Uber Taxi, where you're actually using taxi cabs as well as the Uber drivers. And I don't see the point in that. The whole point, yeah, we already had that. It was, yeah. yeah, it was called a taxi, and we're doing. We were we Uber was the was the reaction to uh, the fucking uh, the the uh, the the lazy taxi industry. Uh, but then, fucking then the taxis all over. were like, "Oh, people like Uber. We'll just put Uber in the front of our name too." Yeah, or they they struck some kind of deal. So so be careful of that. You want to just go ahead and use the Uber, or just take a cab. I mean, European cabs. Uh, I don't know that they're as uh, apathetic as the uh, the American versions, but they all came from somewhere, right? Um, yeah. <clears throat> your uh, Berlin Zoo experience. There's a sure. there's a way to save money there if you buy your tickets online or just mo- you're not gonna want mobile tickets because I don't know how, I don't know how you do that over there with your phone but uh, yeah but the one thing I noticed about the Berlin Zoo is uh, unlike here in America where they uh, stopped actually letting people watch the uh, the animals eat unless it's you know like a fucking a duck or something they actually have uh, feeding times for the carnivores so you definitely want to uh, kind of wrap your trip around that uh, schedule. Cool, cool. What are the odds it'd be very anal? <laughs> what? <laughs> you mean how they feed the animals? You feed them <laughs> anally? We feed them at 930? 930 what? <laughs> well, uh, it's in the afternoon, so that's good. So they'll be busy. They'll, they'll be laying around, but then in the afternoon, they'll get up because they know it's going to be feeding time. Now, I don't know if they're going to have – if they're going to tie down a goat in the middle of the uh, lion pit or if they're just going <laughs> to – This is we, like Jurassic uh, Park. We call it the Dove's Cry exhibit. <laughs> <laughs> it seems like your best bet would be a, a German speaking town to do something a little bit more uh, rustic as far as uh, feeding. But uh, yeah, bring in the immigrants. Yeah, and and there's a there's an aquarium and there's also a, a tier zoo, which is like a Lion Country Safari type drive. It's, it's a you're on a train, but you go through uh, different uh, kind of um, uh, habitats. Gulags. <laughs> you might you might end up working there, John. I've seen a lot of movies where people get on trains in Germany. It doesn't seem that fun. <laughs> One way. Yeah. Uh, what have you learned about like secret sex shows? Where do I go to see the real weird stuff? Oh yeah, the glass top, glass bottom boats, and the uh, <laughs> I don't know. I, that would I would definitely say that's going to be uh, either uh, 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 West Berlin uh, or uh, maybe somewhere like Munich. That seems like Munich. I thought about this. Do you realize the the Rio Olympics might be worse than Munich? Oh, yeah. <laughs> the body count could be higher. <laughs> oh my god! Could take weeks, but yeah. it will be uh, let's nine talk months about later. Olympics in a second, but I am. I feel like the sex shows are something in Germany. I'm going to ask the Uber taxi drivers about, not regular Uber drivers. The Uber taxi drivers. They know where the sex shows are. We were we were in. Um, this is back in '89. It was a group of us. We had a couple days off. We went to. Uh, fuck. We went to Italy from Salzburg, Austria, took the train down and we were heading towards Yugoslavia. We were going to go to a place uh, called Pula. And we spent a couple days in Rome. And while we were in Rome, we stayed the night at this uh, little pension, little like hostel. And we didn't know what anything around there. This was pre internet, internet and <clears throat> pre cell phones. And we're walking around and we see, oh, there's a movie theater. We go and there's like this old, little old lady taking tickets at the movie theater. We go in. It's a fucking like a full on movie theater with 
the hardest of hard fucking core porn. <laughs> <laughs> they were literally pulling a, a like a boat chain out of some guy's ass. And I look around <laughs> going, well, I'm not, I mean, I don't, I kind of know how this one's going to end, <laughs> but if there's an anchor, I'm going to start vomiting. So let's just get the fuck out of here. <laughs> but it was a family run fucking porn complex but it was like did you guys, did you guys hit the matinee well we thought it was gonna be like we thought it was gonna be like well we'll, we'll get a little local flavor you know we'll go to the local <laughs> lo, the, yeah, the local flavor the local picture house yeah but it was like the 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 grandma actually, was the, taking the, the fucking family tickets. actually made the movies too that was that was uh that was uncle <laughs> uncle larry uncle larry <laughs> mm -hmm. That yeah. was his first big role. How do you get people to do this? Well, we usually get foreigners who don't understand our cost of living. <laughs> yeah, you better like from Alaska. Always check your exits, John. Yeah. Hey, oh, uh, he'll know his exits by the time he's done with that know. show. My exits are gonna be. Hey, ruined. John, you going to open mics? Kind of. <laughs> <laughs> they just there was, a, there was a lot of people laughing. Are there any open mics? Have you checked on that? I did. There is one open mic actually that I'm going to try to. You got to do on... it. Tuesday or Wednesday night of next week, I might have a story about trying to do comedy in Germany, which sounds like a great time. I don't think it'll sure. be much different than uh, than, well, your, than your sets in America. Yeah, so. <laughs> well, actually, it will be different. People will be paying attention; they just still won't be laughing. <laughs> Where are Yamaka? <laughs> At least this way, I'll be able to blame it on a, a language <laughs> language difference. Yeah, <laughs> they don't understand it. I don't think the country was with me. The country was off tonight. Mm -hmm. <laughs> hey John, I know that you've been uh, trying to work, uh, learn a couple phrases, so I wrote some down here that I, that I thought might be useful. And then I thought about it. I go, well, wouldn't it be better if you could actually hear it? Because then you would get the phrasing right. Yeah. So I'm going to try and play these for you. Uh, uh, oh, you're not going to read them? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay. He has people. Do you? Did you? Did you? Did you have? Somebody read them during the audiobook sessions. I think you'll. I think you'll get what's going on here right after the first one. Okay, ready? Let me, I'm, I'm gonna make sure you can hear it. Here we go. Bitte. That is uh, please. Correct. All right. Yeah. These are these are all phrases that I think you're gonna find useful while you're over in in Berlin, and they, and they're just they're real common ones. Here's the, here's the next one. Danke. Danke. Thank, thank you. you. Yes, that's correct, John. You got it. Oh, oh what shame. Here's here's the next one. Here's the next one. Ready, guys? Wo ist die Toilette? Wo ist wo ist die Toilette? Is uh, where's the bathroom? Correct. Oh God! You're doing, God John, you're doing really yeah. good. Okay, here's here's the one that you're gonna get a lot of use out of. Ein Bier bitte. Uh, one beer, please. That's man. You have you been taking like night courses or something? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Shit, I'm practically fluent. Okay, after that last one, this one will come in handy. Wo bin ich? Uh, wo, wo, wo bin ich? Where am I? Yes. Ah. See? Yeah. Yes. I, I, maybe I should have said it with a slur. <laughs> Your wo bin ich? <laughs> wo bin ich? All right. Here's a, here's, <laughs> and this, this one you can use, the, the last word can just be uh, even an Americanized word. You'll get it on this one when, when you hear it. Ready? Wo ist das Museum? Wo, wo ist das Museum? Where is the museum? Yeah. I'm God. I'm five five. I'm so, so good. So, what was toilet again? Toiletta. Oh, where is the museum? <laughs> Toiletta. <laughs> wo, wo, wo ist wo ist the museum toiletta? Well, yeah, but if you're in the if you're in the museum, you probably save some time there. They'll just tell you where the closest one is. Now Once I again, these are basic phrases, John. Here's here's mm -hmm. another one. Here's another one. We got a couple more here. Ich bin immer noch hungrig. Uh, one more time. Ich bin immer noch hungrig. Did you hear that? It's too quiet. No. Ich bin immer noch hungrig. It's like you have a little German woman whispering <laughs> at you. Yeah. It's like, why are you keeping secrets, Greg? <laughs> I told her to be quiet. Ich bin immer noch hungrig. Hungrig? I have no idea what that means. I, I am something. Hungrig. I'm hungry. I'm hungover. I'm still hungry. That's very oh, good. I'm still hungry. Yeah. <laughs> Where are your Frank Furters? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Here's a. We got two more here, guys. Okay. Okay. I'm okay, ready. Let me get this one. Ich bin nicht betrunken. I am not. I am not drunk. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you can do that while they're ushering you out the door. The schloss. Right. The exit. I'm using. I'm using context clues to figure this yeah, out. Yeah. Yeah. 
I'm going to, as long as people <laughs> speak to me like I'm a two-year-old, I'm going to kill it. Okay, here's, here's the last one, John. And the, 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 these, I think you're going to get along just fine. You've done really well. Let's see here. Ich bin Amerikaner und ich konnte diese ganze Ort kaufen. Oh man, this is a difficult. One. I'm an American and uh, one more, one more time. Ich bin Amerikaner und ich konnte diese ganze Ort kaufen. But imagine me yelling it at the people that just kicked me out of the bar. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. I am an American and I could buy this place. Ah. Uh. <laughs> That is a useful. That is a great <laughs> one. Is, let me write that down. That yeah. might even be like a souvenir tattoo you get when you come home. Uh, <laughs> what I do I look British to you? <laughs> yeah, you, you. Yeah, if 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 it comes down to it, John, if anyone asks uh, if if you speak uh, German, just tell them you speak French or American, and they'll always go with the American, and you'll be you'll be uh, like a, considered a friend at that point. You'll be considered by over there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, perfect. And um, I know frickin' means fuck. Yeah, I really? guess. I'd, yeah. I'd... So frickin' chicken? <laughs> frickin', frickin' henshin <laughs> means fuck chickens. Uh, po means means butt. Po? Po. po. Means like, I think, I'm not sure if it's butt or butthole. I'm so, hoping it's butthole. So what's po boys? Po <laughs> boys. <laughs> Those are butt boys. <laughs> I, I guess I'm confused as to why you're going over there. You're learning a whole different set of vocabulary words. Yeah. Yeah, well, <laughs> he can't hail a cab, but he can find a poor boy. I want a, I want a poor yeah, boy I, with I a fuck chicken. I don't travel much, but I get the most out of it when I do. <laughs> sure. <laughs> and you usually not welcome back. No, so. never. I, I visit countries one time. You're on a do not watch list. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'm very excited. I so yeah, we're going to uh, Berlin and then two days in Prague, which I'm excited because beer is like supposed to be <laughs> like a dollar. Yeah, so I'm very excited to uh, drink all I can drink in Prague, and uh, and then live the German village life for a while and drink a bunch of wine. No, I think that's where you're gonna get stuck. You're just gonna go. I like this. I can do this. It'll be like being in the Amish community, John. You're going to take to it and you're going, I'm not going home. Yeah. Until, until, until Germany makes me. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. You're, I think they're going to get, they're going to be one superpower. Do you see that? They're going to just turn think, into one. Think? Yeah. Know. One big country. It's yeah. going to be good. You're going to be part of it. You're going to rebuild it. It'll be like the Sanders thing, but they'll win. If Angela Merkel <laughs> is listening, I'm sure Angela Merkel is listening. Uh, if you need, uh, if you need a thirty-something creative type to immigrate to Germany, let me know. Has she stepped down yet? I think she's about to step down. We'll be no the only, way. we'll be the only leader with this still a female president. Mm. Yeah, we'll be the only ones because I know Argentina's getting rid of theirs. Everybody's getting rid of theirs. Taiwan has a female. Costa president. Rica got rid of theirs. Taiwan has a female president. Taiwan does. <laughs> Yeah. Well, technically. I might have made that up. You don't, like, no, I mean, if you don't do a physical. I feel, I feel if like you don't NPR, do a physical. I feel like NPR talked about it. <laughs> she kind of has a dick. That's under protest. You're right. If, if she doesn't, if she doesn't uh, submit to a physical, uh, yeah. that, then we really don't. It's one of those, uh, it's a, a man in a dress. Or a, Remember, this, this is a country that invented the Roman candle. You guys, we... <laughs> We are definitely not allowed in Taiwan now. You've insulted yeah. their president. <laughs> it's okay. China isn't invited to Taiwan anymore. So it'll be very interesting to see how it all ends. Yeah. Uh, oh, what else? Oh, I'm going to Bisbee, so I learned some phrases for that. Some big, <laughs> phrases for oh, this is a very nice building. Did the killer bees build this? <laughs> I did uh, last last week at the Tucson Saguaros uh, game. Doug was out of town. I don't know if you saw that. And, uh, yeah, we held our own pretty good. We had a small contingent, but I, I got really drunk and uh, the, no announcer. Wait, but, uh, Greg, you got drunk at a baseball game? Well, yeah, but but I got drunk and uh, we were having a good time. And then I, I bought sponsorship uh, for the, the rest of the season. It's like two more double headers and a total of uh, four weekends left. So I bought sponsorship and then I had to quickly get uh, a, a big sign for out in the and the home run fence and stuff like that. But it, the July 3rd is going to be awesome, Becker. 
Well, oh, good. Every, yeah, everything for basic because July third is has been deemed by the city a, in Bisbee as Killer Termite Day, and oh. everyone will be back, and we're, we're everyone's coming to town for the. For is the there going to be a parade? There will be a, a parade that we're, we have nothing to do with. Um, I would. I I just I I was I was going to to say let's build a float let's do this but I know our track record of getting up and going down to the parade has been uh, basically zero. 100%. It's 100%. I, actually it's been a hundred percent. We're a hundred percent at promising to go and never going. Well, so, I was debating bring my drone and we could fly it over the parade and just watch it. Watch it from here. I I think yeah. yeah the, the only problem is that the parade is really early. I the, want I want them to put yeah, you, you can pre program the drone. I want to put you put you guys in charge of a parade and have like the streets like lined with people waiting for the parade and be like, well, it is uh it's ten thirty. I don't know <laughs> what uh and then around like eleven fifteen, like one drunk guy like just like walking us like they're on their way. They're coming. Don't don't leave. We got better odds of making breakfast. Well, yeah, at eleven o'clock, you can't even get a breakfast burrito over at Jimmy's. So yeah, we'd probably make it by eleven. But we'd be all bloated from eating breakfast burritos. <laughs> <laughs> At which time, we're, we're a parade float. Yeah. <laughs> and that, you know, if we had helium, we could float. Yeah. But nope. <laughs> well, they, they took away the uh, the activity of throwing out candy to the kids along the streets. So why? I don't why? know why. I don't know if did someone, it, did, peanut allergy or some fucking yeah. bullshit some like that. Some kid got, a, got, got mm. like a Reese's peanut butter cup in the eye and they were like, we got to stop this madness. You can hand them things, but you can't toss it. But then now oh. you've got, you You would rather a kid approach a moving vehicle. How and, are we even how are at training? Speed. How are we training kids to catch? Yeah, this exactly. Is, they don't, they don't. They're looking at their phone. It bounces off their phone and <laughs> They get upset. Well, they got to hold the phone in front of their face to shield them from the fucking whoppers. Gray is whipping at them. Yeah. Well, ah, we, we should hand out burgers. Yeah, that would be funny. Burgers on a stick. <laughs> but we we have the we have the storefront and the parade goes right by. So I wanted to just be there handing out water and hanging out and getting drunk during the day. We should get a porta potty. Yes. Get a porta potty. I need that. What's the other part of this? Where's the joke no, part? Bisbee's <laughs> only porta potty. It's going to take five bucks. There's, there's got to be more than one porta potty. No, there's no bathrooms in Bisbee. That's the whole reason. Bisbee, I, Bisbee's pretty progressive like that because Vista Park actually has a public toilet that's open during the day and it's 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 maintained. Not, it, if, not if we chain it. Is it non binary? Do you have to do you have to uh, assign yourself a gender to use it? Uh, what I don't know what that means. Which is it? Is it men or women? They're both. There's both. It's it's, it's oh. yeah. It's it's nice. It's it's Wait, a it's a nice there's little one, feature. There's one bathroom for men and women. Or no, what? no. There's 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 two. There's a, a lady side and a men's side. And uh, I likely. guess if if you're trying, to, trying gen- to control what everybody calls their <laughs> genitals, if you're confused gender wise, there's a drinking fountain in the front. You could just <laughs> use that. I guess <laughs> <laughs> that's called a bidet. <laughs> You know, you'd think they'd put some privacy up here, but that's okay. <laughs> I don't need a modesty curtain. I guess this is how the Europeans do it. <laughs> well, we'll know when John comes back on the 17th. Uh, <laughs> there is a uh, – there. I did – I read a story about a guy in Oregon who had his gender reclassified as non-binary because he had – he got breast implants and did hormone treatment, but he didn't want to get rid of his dick because – I don't know. Buyer's remorse. Because Why? Some people like, never like, like to throw anything away. Yeah. <laughs> he's, he's, he's a genital hoarder. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but I don't know. I just feel like that's the only time it's ever an issue where you need to like reclassify your gender. I guess it's like filling out paperwork. And I don't pay attention to any paperwork I fill out. <laughs> like if, if somebody like marked me down as like a female at DMV and that was on my license, that would be a thing I would laugh about. So what I'm saying is I wish we could all just relax about gender. Let's all just be let's let's just be cool about gender. <laughs> there was a non-issue for the longest time and now it's an issue. So I I think that should be what we do in the parade. We should make a non-gendered float. Just like a a white cloud <laughs> in every in every gender float. <laughs> a, a float that's a that's a big it's like a big vagina on one end and then a 
Okay, big, I like this. I like this. Keep big, going. Then on the other end, it's just a big hanging dick and balls. <laughs> Scraping in the street. <laughs> yeah, it is dragging along dragging the street. Along the big grease mark behind it. Oh, the vagina, it's, it's actually the the float. It's like a, if you design it right, it's like a windsock where the <laughs> the air goes in through the vagina and inflates the penis. So yeah, yeah, yeah. As you as you walk down the street, the penis like raises higher and higher. Except that we're going about two and a half miles an hour. Well, you're gonna have to pick it up. Yeah, yeah we're gonna have to really get a get a good trot. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we'll do crazy eights. <laughs> crazy eights. <laughs> All right. So yeah, no, this is gonna be fun. I uh, I got Becky working on uh, different projects, and uh, it should be good. Yeah, uh, I don't know. Uh, once you get here, uh, we'll figure out the rest. Yeah. Because I mean, like I said, a lot of this stuff is spontaneous out here. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Um, no, that's what the I like last time it. you were out here was the Fourth of July, wasn't it? Yes, I think uh, we went Thanksgiving. Yeah, Fourth of July. And then, Fourth yeah. of July. Uh, I think Colleen was here, and uh, that's when uh, whiskey and Noah were still alive, and we played, yep. we played out on the patio. Yeah. We have some good stories with that. Too. Yeah, yeah. And uh, you are uh, prepared for your, uh, your the magic off. Yes, I am. It's going to be, it's going to be, it's going to be very funny. The Warlock Showdown. (laughs) The Kenny Bang Bang Warlock Becker Showdown. Uh, John, we'll try and get a periscope or something for you so you can can enjoy that. Apparently, apparently Germany doesn't, they don't believe in public Wi-Fi, but I'm going to, I want to follow along on this. Really? There's no public Wi-Fi? There is, but it's spotty. It's like, and there are businesses that haven't made a big deal. Like we have public Wi-Fi. Why are there so many terrorists there if they have spotty Wi-Fi? (laughs) <laughs> well uh, very yeah if you if you're not on my periscope already and this is for everyone it's uh it's at greg shaley and uh i do a bunch of the stanhope stuff as well as uh we'll definitely do something during the fourth of july that's are you at, doing facebook are you doing oh sorry i was gonna say at greg shaley g-r-e-g-c-h-a-i-l-l-e what were you gonna say john do you are you also doing facebook live stuff or are you just sticking a periscope what's facebook live um, it's like, it's Periscope, but for Facebook and it's right in the Facebook feed. So they can watch it live. And so everybody who like, who likes you or Stanhope or, um, whatever page you want to do it on, like they get a notification that you are live and like the video, like Periscope, it'll, if it's not live, they can go back and watch it later. But it, uh, Periscope does the same thing. Periscope keeps it on for about, I think 24 or 48 hours. And then but Facebook, Facebook, they'd already be on. But Facebook right. is like really Facebook's really pushing Facebook Live and like so you know, I, they tell everybody who follows you like go watch this. So if you want to do Facebook Live or be on Greg Shaley C H <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it would actually be the same. So yeah. <laughs> I never but I've never heard of Facebook Live. This is the first time. Well I'm, you I'm should, it. Greg. Yeah. You, it's hot. It's hot yeah, right now. We're huge yeah. up here at Facebook Live. Everybody loves <laughs> Everybody yeah. loves a Facebook Live. Everybody who's using mm-hmm. Facebook Live. We did a live birth. <laughs> if you're not Facebook Live, you're Facebook dead. All right. Well, I will. Uh, I will check into that, John. And uh, I'm pretty sure if it's if it is attached to your Facebook account already, then it will that's be the just, same. That's just a little marketing tip from a guy who has 200 followers on Twitter. <laughs> I think it's over 200. I just checked. Oh, nice. That's a good right, start. Two, two, 211. Thank you. <laughs> More people died in the World Trade Center, but no, that's cool. <laughs> It's cool. Maybe they were all your fans. <laughs> more people, more people died in the last minute than are actually following me on Facebook or Twitter altogether. The Brexit? Do we have yeah, to, the we Brexit? Oh Brexit? yeah, we could first. My favorite Brexit was the one with uh, where uh, Johnny Depp stops in at the comedy store. <laughs> And Brett Erickson gets cropped out of the picture. That is, that is the Brexit. <laughs> that Brett was the Brett exit. Uh, that is a funny. That is a funny picture. That is. He just looked like he was trying to be in the picture, so they went, "Nope." Well, it, you know what? It, it's it 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 just goes to show you. You know, quit fucking around, clown. You know you. No, you, but here's the deal. I said uh, bartenders are more important than comedians. <laughs> I've said it before. <laughs> And I'm right. Brett right. really made himself look like he just was like was a passerby wandering through a picture, though. So this is this is what happened. The, the, the picture will be on the uh, on the page for for this episode. But uh, our, our friend Carrie Mitchell is the bartender in the VIP room at the uh, comedy store in Hollywood, and uh, Doug and Johnny Depp and uh, Ryan Adams all posed for a picture with Carrie Mitchell, and Brett Erickson was on one of the ends. 
and he was being kind of a, a goof and kind of made it look like he was like walking into the picture or not paying attention. And then the someone posted it on Facebook, I think Carrie did, and then People Magazine, E! Online, every fucking tabloid, everyone picked it up. The only, the only news source were the damn TMZ. No, but, everyone but picked it up, it. and the only person who got cropped out of that picture was uh, Brad Erickson. Yep, <laughs> the weak link. <laughs> the weak link. Always stand near the talent. Always. always put your always money put on the talent. Face. The, a good rule of thumb is put your face as close to the celebrity's face as you can. Or that touch or touch them because they can't edit that out. I you didn't – I to be fair, I didn't recognize the kid from the uh, time hot tub time machine. I went, <laughs> yeah. is, is that Johnny Depp's kid? Oh, is that really? <laughs> was that really the guy from yeah, hot tub time machine? Was, yeah. I, he no, like he, his name's Ryan he, Adams. He's a musician. Okay. Yeah. Because I was like, man, that kid really grew up. <laughs> uh, <laughs> A good. I would have if I were Brett. I would have just kissed Johnny Depp like in the picture because that would have made it a lot harder to crop it out. Yeah, they didn't use that one. I don't know. What, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what the security situation is like for a mega. A lot mega of times, star, but... a lot of times, celebs don't want to meet the, the bartender's uh, boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> I just know that from experience. Well, I'll tell you what. When when he's there, um, uh, I'm pretty sure it's not the VIP room. It's the Johnny Depp room. There's there's a. There is a there's plenty of security anytime he's anywhere. Mm. So yeah, there's there's no there's no fucking around. <laughs> my, we like he had a uh Johnny Depp had a new haircut that my girlfriend really liked and wants me to get that hair like she like shaved side haircut. Yeah, that's 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 Frank, mine. That's my style. That's what I said. That's a great shaving style. And I try to tell her like that only works if a you're a mega celebrity and nobody gives a fuck what you actually look like or you're Greg Shaley or you're me and you're a trendsetter. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think you guys have all become pinky blinders. <laughs> <laughs> you're fucking all pinky blinders. Are you wearing a newsy cap right now? With razor blades under the bill. <laughs> the, um, yeah, the, the, the beauty about that haircut is, and, and, and this is, this is for the people who don't have millions of dollars. And that would be me, uh, that I can have, uh, Tracy who does not know, uh, how to cut hair and just has not had any or I massage. Just, I can just have her just shave up the sides. <laughs> and I, now my, uh, my, uh, my once a month haircut is, uh, once every six months, just so someone can finally even it out. And that's it. As a man who owns a hair salon, I think you're really cutting corners here. <laughs> I'm totally cutting corners and, and it is horrible. I can't wait, uh, for Becky to come down here and uh, show Tracy how to handle these clippers. Yeah. No, she'll, 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 she'll do a seminar. But she'll do it late, late, late at night when we're missing the uh, parade. <laughs> four, four in the morning haircuts are the best time. We're bringing the mohawk back. Yeah, but you, but that style cut, uh, it really there's a there's a fine line between um, styled and what I do <laughs> because I mean his he's he doesn't have he's not tapping someone to go hey do you mind just doing the back for me. You know, he's, yeah. he's, he's got probably, you know, a, a, a team of, of Silas. That's a, that is a $1,200 haircut. Yeah. Yeah. And, and there's a fine line between the two, but at the same, you're going for that messy, the messy, like the Peaky Blinders is perfect, Becker. That's, that's exactly mm -hmm. what it is. And, uh, yeah, there's a, there's a, a nice way to do it. And then there's the, every other way to do it. And that's my Yeah. <laughs> I, well, yeah, but Greg, the difference between you and him is not just the haircut. It's he's selling his <laughs> clippings actually online. <laughs> that's a major. That's a major part of his business is just selling like Ziploc bags uh, with locks of hair to like Japanese uh, businessmen. Well, you're selling your hair clippings to German kids who want a Hitler mustache. <laughs> the uh, the gal who cuts my hair out here uh, every once in a while. I saw her at a bar the other night, and my hair was uh, was purple still. And uh, she goes, "Oh, look at that!" And it, she didn't do it because this was another home job. And uh, and she goes, oh yeah, look at look at that. And I go, yeah. And I I lifted up the back so she could see it, and it probably looked like someone cut the back of my hair with fucking jagged glass. She made she had a look on her face like I just threw up on my tie, and I'm like, yeah, I, I think I'm gonna have to get this evened out. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> look at look at that is always a good response when mentioning a haircut. Like, oh, look at that. That is, that is a haircut. Do you ever remember that. your worst haircut? I had one. I was on the road. It's like Kansas City. I went into one of those super, super cuts, which I knew they had too many supers in it to be good. <laughs> super, super cut. And or it legit. said, if you don't like your haircut, it's free. And I went, that's probably not a good ad. <laughs> Yeah, so, that's that's called I mean, that's called a uh, that's called a uh, school, <laughs> right? Yeah, <laughs> it was it was it was unbelievable. And I she went to cut my hair, 
And they go, oh, you get Sylvia. And it, everyone just kind of turned when she said it. And I was like, this isn't good at all. And then they go in and, like, lock, and lock a door in the back. And well, like, let it look. I have fine hair. I have great hair. But it's fine. So you have to get it wet to cut it. And it, I knew this. And she goes, no, no, no. We'll just cut it dry. And I go, no, 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 no. You can't cut it dry. And she goes, no, 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 no. And I'm like. Okay, this is crazy. So she whacks away at it. She's hitting my head with a, a Zacto knife, like Ty Cobb going for the record. <laughs> yeah. I Chopping think, wood. I, I mean, at one point, I, I can't believe I'm not bleeding. And I get, she gets done, and then she wets it. Hmm. So it's kind of disruptive <laughs> of what it looks like. And I just kind of leave going, all right, well, 20 bucks is 20 bucks. I think it was 12 bucks or something. I don't know. Sounds like it should have been free. No, well, get this. So I get back to the hotel and I look in the mirror and I go, you're <laughs> fucking kidding me. I've got to go. It wouldn't even, you, a baseball cap couldn't hide this guy. <laughs> so I go back and go, you got to be fucking kidding me. And the lady goes, I, I, we're returning your money and Gloria will try to, Gloria will fix it. And she's trying to fix it. And they call everybody over to show what a horrible job this girl did. Because, like, they wanted to fire her or something. And they used me as the guinea oh, pig. Oh, you were the lynch. Yeah. They gave me my money back. And I go, I tipped her. Do I get the five <laughs> back, too? And they go, yeah. no. She, she so I paid that. $5 for the worst haircut in my life. Oh, man. I remember one of my earliest memories uh, was getting a haircut and my mom telling – uh, some hair size, probably at like a super cut somewhere in Southern California that I wanted a flat top and I got a flat top and I just remember crying like the whole, throughout the whole haircut. And then afterwards in my mind, I cried for like a week about my flat top because I hated it so much. And so, so now I have a real issue with no, my hair. But, I but like I mean, is that, haircut. is that why you never went in the Marines? Yeah. Because <laughs> you didn't they let you cry for a week? Yeah. I would, <laughs> I, I would, they would have gotten real sick of it. I'll tell you that. <laughs> If it wasn't for that early flat top, I would have a very distinguished oh, military career right now. John, there's no <laughs> way you're go Germany's not letting you stay. No, they love me there. Are you the man who cried about your flat top? <laughs> Private Norris, you're upsetting the men with your constant wailing. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to go home and put on a hat. I'm scared. It's very traumatizing. It's, yeah. Uh, my head was a different shape and I didn't like it. How old were you? <laughs> Uh, I must have been like 28. three or four. <laughs> oh, three or four? Or, or 17. I don't know. I don't picture a guy with hair at three or four. I definitely had hair. <laughs> I came out with like lots of hair. It's, yeah. it's, I'm losing it now. Also, why I'm very concerned. No, that's what I was thinking. Now. I thought you'd start out slow and you end up bald. Oh, yeah. It's, uh, now I'm like, now I feel like if I want to do something crazy with my hair, I should do it now because it's going to be gone soon. But then I'm also like, wait, it's going to be gone soon. I should not fuck this up. I should get some good pictures while I'm, while I'm rocking a full head. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what to do. That's a tricky one. <laughs> Greg, you you have a great head of hair. You're a risk taker. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Those are <Yeah>. true statements. <laughs> if you if you if uh if you knew you had like six months left of your hairline. Which I might. Like it was you might uh, maybe would you what would you do? Would you play it safe and get some some great headshots? That you can use for the rest of your Greg, life. <laughs> Greg, has, listen, as long as I've known Greg, Greg has always had that fucking crazy perfect hair. Greg's got great hair. No, he does. So, I mean, if he had to choose between dating a cosmetologist or a dentist, he had picked a dentist. What's your what's your uh, uh, what's your twin brother's hair situation like? Oh, he shaves his head. He works in uh he works in the uh, in the shop, and it's really hot in there. Even in the winter, it's it's kind of uncomfortable. And uh, yeah, there's. You know, there's always there's, his hands always have like fake blood on them. They're stained with you know, and just uh, all the that's a perfect used. alibi for a real murderer. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> he's, killing, he's got a grow up race. He's killing people. Yes, he is. I mean, but he he'll spend the same amount of money that I spend on a haircut, and his is just basically the number two clipper, uh, all the way grew, across. If he grew his hair out, would you guys have the same hairline? Oh uh, yeah, probably. I guess, yeah, I guess. I I don't know. I really don't. I, That's a weird question. I can't remember. I mean, Becca, you're a twin. You know, you don't you don't look at yeah, it. Yeah, like no, I don't. Yeah, you guys have the same hair. Me and my twin. Yeah. No, no, no. We look completely different. Oh, he no. looks so like not. he looks like every crazy German guy. <laughs> he does. He's got a big, huge anvil jaw. You'll know what that means huge. soon enough, John. <laughs> yeah, he's just he's intimidating. Mm. 
Not to me, but to normal people. But there was a guy who was in the funhouse last week, uh, a professional, and uh, he he said something about my uh, my hair. The the I just dyed it purple. It was starting to get it a little pink. It was starting to, to rinse out a little bit. And he he did say something about like, man, I wish I could do that because he's been going bald for a long time, and uh, and he's got like a tuft or something. And he was so. I guess my answer would be. Uh, Bert Kreischer? No, it wasn't Bert Kreischer. <laughs> I, it would definitely be have fun while you got it because uh, no. there's always a, a, a guy with a big bald patch looking at you going, fucking lucky. So Yeah. I feel, yeah. You know what's funny? It was when the bald thing was really big for a while. They were like, oh, just shave your head. It's cool. And then all of a sudden it went away and then big hairy guys came back. <laughs> with a and vengeance. And now the bald guys are like, oh, it's over? Yeah. <laughs> when well, can I it be like over? I would never want to be like I have. I I have a lot of hair. I just I freak out every time I like take a shower. I'm like, look at these three hairs in my hand. I'm fucking. <laughs> I need to I need to get married right now. I gotta lock it up <laughs> from top or bottom. <laughs> where Everywhere. where are you getting Who the knows? hairs from, John? Yeah. I got a handful. Okay. I got a handful of head hair, pubes, <laughs> asshole hair, like the whole thing. Uh, it's all coming out. That's quite a salad. <laughs> yeah, it's, I should I should need to really I need to refine the way I wash my body because I the hairs are. <laughs> Uh, but I always, I, I never want to be that guy. I actually have like recurring, recurring nightmares of being that guy that just has like a tiny patch of hair, just like the front of your forehead and like everything else is just like bald until the back of your head. Oh, like Cupid doll. Yeah. That's yeah. like terrifying to me. Yeah. There was a guy like that in high school. I think he was straight up bald by 19. Oh god, yeah. that's awful. I met yeah, I met a kid like that too. He was like a, a Persian or something too. So he actually had the comb over in high school, like wispy hair. He was trying to make look like yeah. there was more. Well, there's oh, wow. it's tough because before there, we knew about cancer. <laughs> well, that's the thing. There are people. There's always people in like high school that you know who are super young that have like um, propecia or or go through chemo or something. And like, wait, you mean alopecia? Hair. Alopecia. Yeah. That's it. Alopecia. Propecia, Propecia is, is the medicine. Propecia that, that, is the one that causes pregnant women to lose their baby. <laughs> that was my early are you 46. Right. <laughs> Could you just hand me those pills? No, dude, take them out of the bottle. Just rub them all over your breasts. Oh, it makes me so hot. <laughs> I need you to activate the ingredient. What do you mean you lost the baby? But then there, but then, you know where it is? So there, it's in the toilet. The but, there's those people, and then there's those, but then there's those poor fucking guys who are just fucking having male pattern baldness at like 16, and like are bald by 19, and it's uh, that's got to be one of the most traumatic human experiences. You yeah, can go I mean, yeah, because everyone's going through puberty. You're going through old age. <laughs> <laughs> he he uses a cane. He smokes a cigar. He's really cool for 19. <laughs> Wow, is he a senior? Knows my, this is my boyfriend. We're going to prom. Uh, Years later, his real dad shows up and goes, yeah, that's the reason I left. Yep. <laughs> I didn't want my son looking older yeah. than me. <laughs> I was like, oh, uh, Jesus. Oh, but that's, you know, that has to strengthen you to, like, just fucking go through that torment as a teenager. Well, I would have wore a con if I wanted to look at one. When, uh, <laughs> when, <laughs> when, we were, uh, when we were surfing in, uh, in high school, uh, right after that, uh, my best friend in high school, uh, Jason, he actually went on the uh, circuit to uh, surf professionally. And I remember one time uh, I, I started traveling and playing in bands and stuff like that. It wasn't around much. And I would see him every once in a while, and he would be completely shaved bald. And he's like 21. It's like, what the fuck are you doing? And that's how they would fucking focus on getting into their conditioning to surf. Was that they would? So they they couldn't would, get laid. They would totally, yes, absolutely, <laughs> shave their head and look goofy, like twenty, nineteen to twenty years old. Start shaving their head, and then they would just be, they'd be swimming around the pier at Huntington Beach and going out like five surf sessions a day and eating right and smoking tons of weed. And then that that was their thing is they they just figured they were hideous, so they wouldn't even try to fuck chicks. And I'm pretty sure they ended up fucking chicks anyway. You know, we we did that in swimming, and the thing was is that. <laughs> You could only fuck other swimmers. And last night, get this. That's why you love your wife right there. <laughs> is uh, we, the swimming, uh, the finals. This is for going to the Olympics. They oh, do the okay. finals. So they were on last night and they're on tonight. And my wife goes, hey, the swimming tryouts are on for the for the Olympic team. And I did that. And we, we didn't qualify. But I explained to her, they take 
three out of each group. Yep. So when you watch the eight lanes, I watch. I go watch lane three, four, and five will usually always be the one, two, three. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. that's they do it by seed. But what happens is when you dive in the water, it shoots water out onto the sides. So those end lanes, if, oh, unless turbulent. you're the most amazing swimmer in the world, you oh. get hit with a tsunami on the side. And so it even fucks their time up. And we were in the outside lanes every time. So I go, we're never going to make the Olympics. <laughs> so uh, she knew all the stories from growing up. But we sat and watched that, and we had a blast. And, and they kept putting the women that would win. And she goes, ooh. And I go, yeah, swimming chicks were the only ones that swimmers could get. Because once you shave all your body hair, the only one you can get are these big, beefy chicks with these huge <laughs> Right. But we had a blast watching. We're going to watch it again tonight. It was like a great drinking game. Yeah, we'd yeah. pick who would win and we'd Ooh. do a shot. And Becky was hammered by 1030. Hey, are these- <laughs> you were completely shaved bald from head to toes. Which one of these girls would you hook up with? That's the game. No, but but we had to laugh. They were amazing women, but they just they're not the best. Uh, so, Becca, I got a question about the trials because we were watching it the other night. And it is fun. Mm-hmm. It, it is cool watching it. Uh, I didn't know that. That'll be a little fact to it I can throw out next time we're watching it about the lanes. Uh, but you're right. Those, those seem to be the ones who win uh, right. or at least have the best times. Uh, what do you, are they only taking two or three? For no, the, they take three. Cause I so noticed tonight you'll they, have your finals, but when they show the, when they show the, uh, the, the results of the swim, there will be uh, the, the Olympic rings will be next to the top two uh, places. And then everything else won't have an Olympic ring next to it. Right. So. It, it all comes down to time. So say they do three heats of, the 50 meter. Mm-hmm. Okay. You're going to take two out of this one, two out of that one. Two out. Okay. So what you're doing, yeah, yeah. and then they do the finals tonight. You'll have the All finals. Right. Last night they had some finals and when they hit the wall, they went, you, oh, those three are going to the Olympics. Yeah. They're in, is it, they already qualified because they have the best time recorded. Is it three for each event or three for each event? Unless it's a medley. And then the medley see then what happens is you can be put on a medley. That's what we did. Like I got put on a medley for like freestyle 50 free on the individual where one guy does breaststroke, one guy does butterfly. And so I made it on the freestyle relay and then I made it an individual event, the hundred meter. And so you, you get on these, but then once it's over, and this is the beauty. And this is what I had to tell Becky the whole time growing up was uh, when, when it was over after all that, they go, yeah, now you're too old to make the Olympic team. It's just done. <laughs> and they don't really pound that in your head until that meet. Like you want to take a free swim, or are you so kidding? you're you're busy shaking off high five and going, you're going to Olympics, and they go, yeah, you're not. So that, if you could if you could clear out your locker, so Zam Fear here can take it over, that'd be great. And some sixteen year old kids look at you going, you didn't make it. I go, I get it, but you didn't either. Yeah, the problem you grew up in a country with too many too many people. Yeah, uh, no. So last week, uh, the Air Force thing I went out on. The colonel we were hanging out with was on the Guam Olympic team as a swimmer. Yeah. And it must be great. That's how we up, got here. Growing up in a country. <laughs> like, there's like they have – like the swimming team, like, there's like three people. And so they're like, oh, you all made it. No. <laughs> and and that's, like, so uh, do you want to do like a free swim or what? Every, do whatever. Everyone thinks immigration is like this thing. I go, yeah, if I had a fucking kid playing basketball, I'd send him to Italy or anywhere. I wouldn't fucking – compete in this market <laughs> this freestyle market of tall ganglies just go to fucking china next thing you know your kid's the number one chinese basketball player other than that ming ling basketball's huge in china though it's then you're competing against a billion people no but now they're genetically <laughs> altering kids to make them taller yeah i'm telling you it's a dangerous country we need to stop it <laughs> they're eating up all our helium <laughs> to make their kids taller. Yeah. They pump wait, full wait, of helium. Wait till the Japanese so start putting helium on their pizza. We'll be doomed. <laughs> helium pizza? Yeah, that's it. Remember, I grew up. It all goes back to the mini corn. They invented mini corn. Mini corn, the Japanese start putting it on their pizza. And all of a sudden, farmers across the U.S., micro farms, start raising mini corn because it was a huge market and they were the price was – Five dollar return, which was a dollar twenty five. These like those little like baby corn. Yeah, baby the, corn. It looks like a, a small little miniature corn yeah. on the cob. And they put it on their pizza. They did it for two years. People changed their entire lifestyles in the United States, farming just for mini corn. And then they started putting something else on it. And they the market dropped. It was like the hooligan market I just told you about. And all of a sudden these people are standing there, what do you do with all the mini corn? And they go, and that's where the pot belly pigs came from. <laughs> what? They start raising <laughs> pot <Popeye laughs> pigs, they love mini corn. <laughs> <laughs> You got to be able to change. 
I feel like the Japanese have shitty pizza. <laughs> no, they start, well, look, they start putting Netflix on their pizza, and now it's gone up a dollar. <laughs> God damn it. Oh, you know what else we had? We had the freak show came to town. The cutthroat, cutthroat carnival. What an amazing show, Greg. Those guys are, yeah, that guy's, he's been doing it for a long time. How many people did you bring up with him? Uh, four. Uh, how many girls? Uh, three. Oh, great. Yeah. Yeah. Usually, it was a really good show. Well, it was the, fantastic. I noticed the poster had some uh, like suicide slash carnival type gals. No, um, they were great. Well, I'm Very just saying, high. it's like you you, you, se- Sorry, you, you yeah. send that message, and then you show up there, and there's a, a big like a big hairy guy who uh, you know swallows swords, and then a midget, and uh, the, the MC, and you're like, where are the chicks? So that's great. Yeah. You brought chicks because no, they were really hot, and they were. I, we went to the band house afterwards. I never go to the band house usually, and they were like, they're gonna be over the band house. So I went over, and I talked to one of them. She was fantastic, and she's wearing clown makeup, and she's hot as hell. And I'm sitting there talking to her, and we're talking about all kinds of world about events. About helium. No, about world events. She wanted to sneak into Canada, and she took the test to become a Canadian citizen because she's given up on America. Mm-hmm. And she flunked it. <laughs> <laughs> How American. And I go, were you wearing the makeup when you did the test? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it was really cool. They were fantastic. Cool. I'm sorry, we're good on clowns in Canada. Yeah, Circus Olaid. <laughs> uh, the Juggalos but, are looking for more people. Maybe you can. <laughs> no, but what she, does the test consist of? Well, she said you got to know their, you know, their anthem, the this, their history. Da, da, da. Oh, Canada. Yeah, it's a lot. That's a lot. Yeah, and you got to know uh, about lumberjacking. <laughs> wilderness survival skills. but no it was a really good show it was a good you know decent turnout for it and thing and it would you know if we'd have done it in the winter i think it'd have been a little better than a sunny day but yeah who am i to know huh what do i know yeah. about the bar <laughs> i'm an idiot coming to a city near you <laughs> you have a show that's like bar rescue but the opposite of rescue yeah. and bar destruction yeah what can we do what can we do backwards here well, it looks like you're bringing a nice yeah. profit every night yeah. you know what i think you need electric eels you need yeah. a big tank of electric eels in the middle of the bar well, we got an idea in front of your bar we're gonna put police tape and a body in it. <laughs> how about that maybe that'll keep them out huh yeah what do you know hey your side of the bar keeps listing that's why i can't do it on a boat day old oysters Let's do it. Hold the oysters. <laughs> Shrimp with stuff in them. <laughs> Instead of an oyster bar, we're going to turn this into a fake crab bar, a K-Rab bar. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. We have a good dead spot. Like, <laughs> no, like I, I, go. I just realized that's a good uh, that full circle to the K-Rab. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, Greg Shaley, I will be seeing you next week. Mm-hmm. Technically, if you consider Sunday a fun day. Yeah. And uh, John will be going off to Germany. Yeah. I think this might be the last time we see him. We should treat it like he's going off to work. Yeah. Want to go to Horace <laughs> to tonight? Just to blow? <laughs> uh, Let's do it, John. One big send off. Uh, I, will, I will see you guys on the other side of Germany. Yes. How it felt for our men and women in World War II. Well, when you're at your Holiday Inn Express over there, I don't know what they call it. <laughs> I am seeing an Holiday Inn Express. <laughs> <laughs> you're every american they love i was looking for like real like classic looking hotels and they were all just like hey 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 steph you want to go eat at the burgers are <laughs> <laughs> what a way to really just grab like a big chunk of that local culture john and stay uh, at the ooh, holiday I inn i am the guy who's gonna like get off the and be like oh they have taco bell here perfect this is great <laughs> what time's exit <laughs> So you've listened to another episode of Near the Wild. I'm Matt Becker, sitting in Anchorage, Alaska, in my house. And I am John Norris, also in Anchorage, Alaska, with a bladder full of Kirkland light beer, just like it should be. (laughs) (laughs) And I'm Greg Shaley, in wonderful Bisbee, Arizona, dodging those rays of sun coming down. It's going to be beautiful, Becker. We'll see you during Fourth of July weekend. Brilliant. Don't forget your sunscreen. Oh, yeah. It's going to be magical. You've been listening to the Near the Wild podcast with Matt Becker and John Norris, recorded in Anchorage, Alaska on Matt Becker's Backyard Bus, engineered by me, Craig Shaley.
sci-fi situation is going to be like I'll just I'm it's going make... to be state of the art. They're the most industrialized country mm-hmm. in the world. They have robots that make robots. 